Jackson State utterly dominated Southern. And then also Virginia Union might have lost everything they built in a great season with this one loss to Chowan. Oh yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU podcast, your number one daily one stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On podcast network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, aka the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. Day And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked on HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that your journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. And we're also putting up minute and a half recaps of the game of the week or whatever game stood out the most on Saturday. So make sure that you guys are following me on Twitter and don't forget the S on the end of South Exclusives. Man, happy Halloween to you and your family. Hope you guys get to enjoy the festivities, get to go out trick-or-treat and take the kids out, do all the other good stuff. Hope you guys have some good costumes. I'm excited. I love Halloween, right? For multiple years, I've been telling myself I'm gonna have a really good costume. I haven't done it. So maybe I should say I like Halloween, but I love Halloween. It's a great, great holiday, right? That being said, I'm fresh off of homecoming and I missed an eventful weekend in the star studded game was Jackson State versus Southern, and they absolutely obliterated them. Jackson State dominated Southern, crushed them, smashed them. Once they started going, and really once they got that offense flowing, it, it, it felt like it was pretty much over, you know, honestly. And I feel like this game, it holds a lot of significance between the two teams, of course. It had a, a large magnitude specifically for Southern. But then you also look at it and say, it's on college game day. Right. That's the feature location for college game day, the Boombox Classic. This is a game where you probably had even more eyes on you. And Jackson State came out and they took care of business. They handle it. And if you're watching that game, you're probably sitting there like, "Ooh, are they the truth? Because they are the truth. But some people might not have, you know, might just decide to flick on because it was there for college game day. So thought it was a really good game by them. But <clears throat> excuse me. I've said it before. And I'll say it again. I think Jackson State is the best team. I think Jackson State wins out. I genuinely do. I know I've said things like Texas Southern could give them a good game. Maybe that wasn't enough to move the needle for you. That's okay. But then I said things like, I think Alcorn could beat them. I'm softening my stance on that. Uh, Alcorn got me out here looking bad for saying they quality games and quality wins for teams. But that happens. Things change as the season goes on, and that's all right. But don't allow me saying Alcorn could beat them or Southern could beat them. Make you think I thought they would beat them. No, I thought it was a possibility. It I, I'm, doesn't mean I thought it was going to happen. I still think Jackson State is the best team. I've said that time and time again. But sometimes things get a little lost in translation. You say multiple things, people might get confused. Jackson State, to me, is the best team. We'll beat everybody on their schedule this year and we'll finish the season undefeated. I've said that. Now, simple and plain. So that's where I stand on it. If that doesn't happen, I was wrong. Period. <clears throat> Period. So if I'm looking at this game and I'm trying to see where everything changed, it was easily the second quarter. That is the quarter that this win will stand on the back of. This is the quarter where you see the separation. It was the tone setter. And it was the best quarter from Jackson State for a couple of reasons. Number one, they scored two-thirds of the points in that quarter. Basically, nearly two-thirds of their points. They scored 22 of their 35 points. So not quite um, two-thirds, but basically there. This was a dominant quarter by Jackson State. Offensively, they put everything together. They had four drives in that quarter. One started in the first, but it was basically like half and half. Like three and a half minutes was in the first quarter. Four minutes was in the second quarter. So it's basically like a split quarter, and they scored a touchdown on that drive. I'm going to go ahead and give the credit to that second quarter. <clears throat> So with me, I'm looking at four drives. You could say three, but I'm going to say four drives in that second quarter. 
Three of them resulted in touchdowns. You had that one that extended into the second, touchdown. They had a punt the next drive. And then the next two drives after that, touchdown and touchdown. One right before halftime. So this was their best quarter. They scored 22 of their 35 points. They had their most yards in this quarter. It felt like this was the quarter that set the tone and let Southern know, this ain't your day, buddy. This is not the day for you. So you got to look at it that way. And that's why I feel like this was the quarter that propelled them to victory. But the most important, well, not most important, the most interesting part of this game to me was how Shador Sanders had to win. He's been airing it out pretty much all season long. Like that's where he lives. He lives to air it out. It didn't work that well today. He didn't hit 200 yards today. He didn't hit 55% completion today. He didn't, or on Saturday, I should say, excuse me. He didn't do it. So, I mean... Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment. But he chose to win with his legs. And I've never thought he was a great runner. I thought he was an effective runner, right? But then he has that 42-yard touchdown. And the whole time, I'm thinking somebody's about to catch him. And it's not that he was moving slow. I'm just like, bro, he's not that great of a runner. I might have to reevaluate because that was an impressive play. You know, he was in the open field. And I'm like, okay, somebody going to get him. Somebody. And he beat the guy to the pylon. I said, look at Shador. Look at Shador running the rock. But overall, yeah, he chose to win with his legs because he had to. And that was impressive. And I think that is kind of a microcosm of what Jackson State has been. When they can't win with their offense, they got the defense to match. When Shador can't win with his arm, he uses his legs. So while he had a season low in passing yards, he had a season high in rushing yards. For the first time, he crossed the 50-yard threshold. So you got to look at it that way. And that's the way I choose to look at it because to me, that's the most successful or that was the most impressive part of Shador's game is the fact that he did uncork his legs and he did win with his legs. He had two touchdowns on the ground in that game. But then also I want to talk about Southern side of this because that's the only real part, real time I'm going to talk about Southern and their outlook. I don't say this often and this is, the, I'm not supposed to say this as an objective journalist, but it's my objectivity that makes me want to say this. I am rooting. Ugh, I am rooting for Prairie View to beat Alcorn because I don't want to see this game again. I think it's either Southern or Prairie View that wins. I don't think Alcorn's in the mix anymore. I think they're done. Southern, I think, will probably win out. They could still win out, right? So you're looking at a Prairie View team with two losses or with one loss. They need to beat Alcorn because I don't want to see Jackson State versus Southern again. Honest, honestly, I think the only people who want to see this game again are Southern fans who feel like this ain't really indicative of who we are. And while you might be right, I don't personally care to find out if you are. Just going to be honest with you. This game was a blowout, and it very well could be a repeat in, this, in the SWAC championship game where you get to see them again. I don't know. However, I want to see something new. Jackson State won't play Prairie View this year unless they play him in a SWAC championship game. And I believe that happens if Prairie View beats Alcorn. So I am, unfortunately, rooting for them stupid cats up to 90. So I, you won't hear me chanting for Prairie View, but go ahead. I hope that they win this game. And going forward, we're going to be talking about our three matchups, two storylines, and then also the key to victory that we highlight for every week. But we're going to see how did it play out and how did it influence this week's game versus Jackson State and Southern. First, I want to tell you, however, about Bet Online because they are good friends. And if you want to make some extra money on the side, Bet Online is the best place to do it. And they want you to win, which is why they're going to continue to give you information. And if you've been putting money down on my Pelicans, then you probably are winning. Uh, ah, you can't see the bobblehead behind me, but it's okay. We play the Lakers on Wednesday. Go ahead and put some money down on there. The Pelicans have been a really good bet for people this year. I'm telling you, man, they've been covering the spread. They've been doing really well. So make sure you're putting down some money if you're not a Pelican fan. Whatever your team is, make sure that you're putting some money down on Bet Online because who doesn't want to make a little money sitting on a couch? Because you know sports. You listen to me because you know sports. Go ahead and show how much you know it on Bet Online, where the game starts. As we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day for your second listen of the day. Make sure you're checking out Locked on Sports today. Peter Bukowski is going to bring you all of the best stories nationwide every single day. It's the easiest way to talk to the, or listen to the insiders and the experts who can give you all of the national news better than some of these other people who are just, they just national. 
No, let's go ahead and listen to these people who are specifically for each section. It just so happens to be on a national show. Today's word of the day is scour, and it means to search something carefully or thoroughly. <laughs> this game is crazy, but when I look at how the matchups turned out, you wouldn't think that the game was going to be a 35 to nothing shutout. And let me tell you why. So the first matchup that we wanted to talk about was Shador Sanders versus the Southern defensive backs. Now, this is interesting because objectively speaking, Southern's defensive backs probably won this matchup. If we're just going to be honest, he didn't hit 200 yards, didn't hit 55% completion percentage. It was not a great day through the air for Jackson State. They actually held them to their season lowest in passing totals a second week in a row, ironically. But so objectively, just stepping back and just looking at it with no kind of context, you would probably say that Southern won that matchup. And to be honest, it's hard for me to say that they didn't. But the only reason I'm going to say that, I'm going to call it a draw. I'm going to call it a draw because the truth of the matter is this was all about protecting the football. This was about Southern's ability to create turnovers. And Shador needed to break his turnover streak. Well, he did that. While he didn't have a lot of yards, and that was a small part of this matchup, the big part of the matchup was the fact that Southern can take the ball away. Southern is great at forcing interceptions. They didn't do that on Saturday. So in the way that I focused on, I don't want to move the goalpost, the way that I focused on, Shador did win that. But you can't ignore the fact that he had his season lows in percent completion percentage and then also yards. So I'm going to call that a draw. Then you look at Bashawn McCray versus Aubrey Miller. Aubrey Miller clearly won that. Clearly. Um, the matchup was to force the running backs to have to beat you. That was, the, that was the focus, right? Because if you don't want McCray to get loose and be able to run all on you, and now you have to deal with him as well. Well, he had 16 attempts. And I kind of hate that some of these websites do this, but they have a loss in a gain. I don't really want to see the loss in a gain, and I also believe that the loss includes sacks for quarterbacks, and I don't like that. If it includes sack, if it doesn't include sacks, I'm glad to be wrong. Somebody please tell me if you know that's the case. But for some reason, I believe that they include the sacks. Well, McCray, McCray got sacked for 21 yards lost. He had 25 yards total loss. But let's just focus on the fact of what he did gain on these 16 attempts. 16 attempts, 32 yards gain. And it'll be in seven total, but let's just focus on the gains. 16 for 32 is terrible. That is horrendous. Even if you want to take out the three sacks and take 13 for 32. Terrible, right? Let's do a little bit of quick math, right? You go from two yards per carry to still under three yards per carry. That is horrendous. But that's great if you're Jackson State. That is a major W when you're looking at it. Once again, if somebody knows if sack yardage is included in those websites, all you got to do is go to Jackson State's website, Southern, any of these HBCUs. They're going to have rushing, gained, and then lost. It's, it's very simple. But it's, if you know the answer to that, Please tell me, because I hope that's not the case. But that is a big W for Jackson State because they didn't allow him to get loose. And that's something that you probably wanted to focus on, stopping Bashawn McCray. They did that on the ground, and they also did that through the air. But this one was just about the ground with Aubrey Miller. Then you look at Southern defensive line versus Jackson State's offensive line. I know that Southern gave up 35 points. Mind you, they went through 14 possessions. So they went through a lot of possessions. And they only scored on five of them. They went through 14. They scored on five of them. I'm not going to sit here and congratulate you for giving up 35 points. However, it's not as bad as it looks, right? And when you specifically isolate this matchup, the Jackson State offensive line, basically against the defensive line and disruptive stats of Southern, it's hard to say the Southern didn't win this matchup. You got nine tackles for a loss which is more than Jackson State typically gives up. You have two sacks. That's kind of on par. That's not blowing it out the water. But nine tackles for a loss is really good. So how can I sit here, though they got blown out, and say that, oh, yeah, Jackson State definitely won this matchup? It's hard for me to say that because when you isolate it and look at the disruptive stats, it wasn't even Taj Brown. It was Jalen Campbell. Um, and you're just looking at them, you're like, man, they did really good. And that's why it's so funny to me because when you look at two of the three matchups, One's a draw. Southern won the other one. Like, I could legitimately make an argument that Southern defensive backs did win the matchup versus Shador. And if I had not focused on the protecting the football, that would be 2-1 to one Southern. But Jackson State utterly dominates this game. It's just funny to me when reviewing. Now, Jackson State in the red zone. That was major. That was something that they truly did want to focus on. And I think that's a big W. 
you should be ecstatic with how they performed in the red zone. I am. Dion probably won't just because he's a coach and coaches will pick on any little thing. And that one thing is the fact that they did have a turnover in the red zone. That's coach right there. That's 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 up to coach. But for me, they scored three out of the four times and it was no field goals. It was all touchdowns. So to me, that's very impressive. That's something that I'm looking for. It's something that was weak against Campbell. You had four out of six scores in the red zone against Campbell. Sounds good, but three of those uh, scores, three of the four, were field goals. This week, you have four red zone attempts, and all three of them are touchdowns. That is taking a point of emphasis and turning it into a strong suit. The other storyline we were watching is what was Southern's offensive approach. It wasn't good, period. Next. They didn't put any points on the board. And then the key to victory was to put points on the board early. Specifically early because I didn't want y'all to be like, duh, Darian, you have to put on point, put points on the board to win. But the truth is, I wanted you to avoid a deficit. That goes to both teams. I want you to avoid a deficit. Southern clearly didn't do it. They didn't score at all. Jackson State got going in the second quarter. So nobody really got going early. But when the second quarter happened, you had 22 points. That really was enough. It was a tone setter, like I said earlier. And then overall, that was the point where once Jackson State put it together, there was no coming back. Because you put up 22 points right before halftime, and you're like, man, you're feeling great going into halftime, while the other team is probably feeling pretty crappy. So those were our things that we were looking out for in this game. Three storylines, two matchups, one key to victory. I find it kind of ironic that you can't really say that Jackson State did phenomenal in most of them, but when you look at the game, they truly did go phenomenal. They truly did do phenomenal in the aspects that mattered, like scoring in the second quarter. But going forward, we're going to be talking about a very unfortunate loss for Virginia Union in which they lost to Chowan and they might have just lost everything as we continue with Locked on HBCU. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, Virginia Union very well could have just lost everything that they built in a phenomenal season in one loss versus Chowan. It's devastating. This is truly a heartbreaking loss, man. Like, I feel like they've been so good all year. I've been on a Jada Byers hype train. They knocked off Bowie State, felt like a monkey was off their back. And then they lose this game to Chow, and, and it's bigger than one game. This is bigger than one loss. This very well could derail all of their season hopes in one game. And I'm not joking. I'm not being hyperbolic. When I say these things, because I've said this a couple of times about a couple of teams, this one is the one that hurts me the most. I ain't going to lie. I've taken a liking to, to Virginia Union. I'm just be honest with you. I'm a Texas Southern guy. I'm a SWAT guy. But through this season, I've taken a liking to Jada Byers and to Virginia Union. I've been very interested to see how their season would transpire. Now, by the time that you guys hear this, the D2 regional rankings will likely be out. I have to record this and then go run somewhere. I got stuff to do, right? But I'll be putting this out. So I'm recording this Monday morning, but it'll probably come out like Monday afternoon. Could I have to go do something real quick that could take a couple of hours, but I'm going to put this episode out, obviously. The thing is, I'm not going to harp on where they'll land because by the time you hear this, it'll probably already happen and I'll sound pretty much outdated, right? By predicting something that's basically already happened. But at the time that I'm speaking, it hasn't. So instead, I'll focus on why this game will affect them so much. I will say this. I think that Virginia Union is going to drop out of the top 10. It's the only thing I'm going to do predicting. I'm not going to cut through this. I'm just going to get to you raw. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Whatever. I'm just going to be here to stay. I don't care. If they are in the top 10 still, boy, I'm happy. But I don't think that's going to be the case. When I'm talking about the top 10, last week, the D2 football rankings were dropped for each region. And you had the top 10 teams. Only seven are going to make it, but you had the top 10 teams. And this order or this list was released in alphabetical order. So you don't know where anybody actually was. You just know that they were in the top 10. So I can tell you all the 10 teams in the top 10, but I cannot tell you where in this 10 that they landed. And that makes it very difficult to predict what's going to happen for Virginia Union. Because let's say they're up at like number two or something. Well, if they're at two, this loss might only drop them to like six or eight. I don't know. But if they're at like four or five, very well could drop them out the top 10. You don't know these things based off of last week. So now it's kind of a dice game where you don't know what's coming. I like it, though. It's, it's interesting. And we will recap this at some point during the week, whether that's tomorrow's episode or the episode after that. We will talk about these rankings at some point 
throughout the week. Now, the reason it's so major is because you just lost a Chowan. They're probably not going to lose again. Chowan's probably not going to lose again. So that means you're probably not going to make the playoffs. You only have one game. When you look at how Chowan played over the last three weeks, I'm not going to say that they're going to fold versus, I think, Elizabeth City State. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. So with that being the case, Virginia Union ain't making it to the playoffs. I mean, to the uh, conference championship. And not making it to a conference championship is only going to hurt their chances at the playoffs even more. As unfortunate as it is to say, that's the real. I hate it. I hate it. Like I said, I've taken a liking to them. But it's just tough because they've been great. And how did this happen? This happened because the name of the game is stopping the offense. Well, let's first look at how Chowan did that to Virginia Union. Jada Byers has been unstoppable all year. This is the first week that he didn't get into the, into the end zone. That's a win. Then you look at Virginia Union. Thought they did a decent job against Chowan's offense. However, it wasn't the offense that did him in. The name of the game is stopping the offense from scoring points. But it's going to be really difficult to win when your opponent is putting up points when their offense isn't on the field. So, punt block. Two pivotal touchdowns. Punt block for a touchdown. That put Chowan up for, for good. It was done. They never got above that. But that put Chowan up. Then you have a pick six with about a minute and change left in the game. That put Chowan up two scores, and that cemented their victory. So it was like, okay, yeah, that punt block put them up, and that was the, you know, I guess the game... It took the lead. That's the touchdown that took the lead, however you want to say it. But that pick six is what really cemented the fact that we knew they were going to win. You weren't putting up two points in, or two scores in a minute and ten seconds. That would have been crazy. But it didn't happen, right? It's already hard enough to beat a good team. But when you look at a team that's good and you give them points when their offense isn't on the field, it's darn near impossible. You're not going to win many games when you allow a punt block touchdown and then also an interception return for a touchdown. It's just not going to happen, and it didn't happen for Virginia Union, unfortunately. So on tomorrow's episode, we are going to talk about North Carolina a ts victory over Campbell and then also just the, I guess, the three-team gauntlet, if you want to say, of HBCUs that Campbell went through. We're going to review both of those aspects of Campbell's season and North Carolina a t because this is a big win for the Aggies and a big win by my guy, Bayshaw Tootin. But for your second listener, so I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. That's what you can expect on tomorrow's episode. For your second listen of the day, make sure you're checking out Locked On Sports today with Peter Bukowski. And he's going to be breaking down everything that you need to know from a national standpoint. He's going to have people coming on every day to break down their stories that they are specifically experts in. And like I said, it's Halloween. Let me see. Wrong way. It's Halloween. So with it being Halloween, this is always here, right? This is my mask. This is Zoom. Uh, this is from The Flash, season two. I know a lot of people see it as usually right here, but it's Halloween. So I just thought I'd throw it on because why not, right? It's spooky season. Let's see. There you go. Huh. All right. So until the next time they... <laughs> Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace. Happy Halloween.